Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by the last. Gingers aren't made for this heat, are they? Listen, this sun is at, I can feel it stinging my forehead already. And we're now five seconds in, and I feel it already. It's, it's stinging me. You know what, I only just got over sunburn from America as well, and it, I feel it coming again. But you know what, we're not going to complain. The summer's back, the lovely weather's back, the vibes are back, the festivals are back, life is back. So, really. And life is good. We've done a media day in a pub garden which is an absolute bonus. Um, a Johnny Fisher media day as well, which, look, we know Johnny's well-supported, well-backed by not just people from Romford, Exeter, where his uni was, and, you know, to be honest, he's well-supported around the UK, and you can tell from days like today, um, he must be an absolute dream to work with, because you know that side of the fact of drumming up support is kind of half-sorted. I'm genuinely not even taking the mick out of any um, shows in the UK, but I'm actually being honest. I've seen more people turn up here than I have to see some UK shows for a boxer match. This was labelled as a ticket collection. So it's just people have already purchased tickets to come and collect. And obviously Matchroom's done a little bit of promotional day on the old ball, um, like rodeo ball. Uh, so it is incredible. I, this guy is made to be a superstar. He's just the most likeable person ever. Hasn't got ahead of himself. Knows what level he's at. He's loved by everyone. And now they're all down here to support Johnny to collect their tickets. So that's basically what his day is. It is actually ticket collection day. So that's all it is. Um, we'll quickly reflect on the night at Ali Pali. Uh, I said this to Johnny earlier. I spoke to him after and he said, a win, but a tough day at the office. And kind of the first tough day at the office that Johnny had had. Now you reflect on that whole experience. I know there would have been a lot of pressure going in because it was so publicised how many tickets he'd sold. But a good experience for Johnny nonetheless because he fought someone who gave him things to think about here and there and will do him good going forward. Absolutely. And Goumier, ask Anthony Joshua about him, gave Joshua some of the most awkward rounds he's ever had, yeah? And told Fraser Clark, you know Fraser Clark was meant to fight him, told Fraser Clark he shouldn't fight him because of how awkward he is, yeah? He's an awkward customer. If you get inside of him and let your hands go and you, and you connect well, you can get rid of him, but he's a hard, hard night's work. He won a couple of rounds against Rivas and Rivas only could beat him on points, a world-level fighter. Um... And Johnny learned a lot that night, and almost anything that could have gone wrong that night went wrong. Johnny broke his hand before he went in the ring. So he went in there with one hand, basically, that actually worked. And it was his jab, not even his best shot, his right hand. So, um, um, no, sorry, it was his right hand that was in, so all he had was his jab, basically. And uh, he got cut early off a head clash, which obviously, being a young fighter with not a lot of experience, isn't ideal. Um, so, but it's another experience you can learn from. It's what we all take in the bank. And he still won virtually every round. So, you know, all in all, looking back, it's not, the, it's not a bad performance. But because there was a lot of hype around Johnny, as there should be, and you don't knock someone out, they just think it's a bad day. It's not always a bad day to win on points. You know, boxing, all great boxers win fights on points. So, um, and it's a great learning lesson for Johnny. Because you know what? That's what he, he, he doesn't have is experience. So he's gone in there. He's learned off a very durable guy, a very good guy. He's beaten some actually good fighters um, in his time as well. And uh, he won every round, and uh, there's a lot of good to take from it. And he wasn't even fully fit, because he went in there with a broken hand and that as well. So there's a lot to take from it, from a guy in his whole life has had 14 fights, amateur and pro. And those amateurs were years before he even turned pro. They weren't even senior amateurs, were they? They were kind of like, don't want to sort of write them off, but they were like your, your real amateur level. Yeah, yeah. Like They weren't senior ABA fights. No, he was knocking out people at university, basically. Not, 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 not on the street, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, like, no, like, university fights. So he was fighting against other universities. A lot of those guys have only been training one year. So, like, it's, like, almost, like, the lowest level you could really, like, operate at. So, like, like, complete novice coming into the pros. But he's just learned so fast. Like, it's crazy. You watch him spar Joe Joyce. You watch him spar Derek Jajor and all these other guys. He more than holds his own in his spars. Tyson Fury... Like, if you can't do, hold your own with all these guys in sparring, unless you're very good, yeah? And he's still only a puppy in this game, you know? He's young, he's got a lot to learn, he knows that. But the sky is um, the limit for uh, Johnny because he's, he's doing so well all the time. He's so dedicated and he knows what level he's at. He's not jumping ahead of himself and he's such a good listener. And if, if you've got all of those things together, it's got the uh, capabilities to make a great fighter. And in terms of what we'll get in Sheffield, just kind of an opponent who will give him different things to what he's had before because I know he'll want to fight a different range of opponents so when it does get to the title level whoever he has to fight he's ready be it Southport, Orthodox someone who's very cagey someone who's open so one of the styles that perhaps he hasn't seen yet is what we can expect for, from August 6th Absolutely so um, well we've been sparring Orthodox the whole time I'm hoping we've got an Orthodox on uh, fight night but um, 
But he's like, what I want is someone to give him a couple of rounds. Someone's going to make him think here and there. Hit him as well. I want I want Johnny's uh, chin to get tested. You need someone who's going to open up, Johnny, do you think? I, I want him to know how to open them up. I think that's what more... I, I wouldn't mind someone who's clo closed up. Then he's got to work out how to open them up. That's what. That's how you, you break someone down. But listen, I'm not going to lie and say it's going to be a world beat because it's not. But it's going to be someone that give him a couple of rounds. He has to do a lot of thinking for it. He's, he's going to give him work back. And inevitably, Johnny gets to win in, and hopefully in uh, knockout style as well. Just one more thing on Johnny and kind of this whole collective of him being backed by so many people. Do you think perhaps a little bit of pressure got to Johnny? Like I said, he was injured and he fought someone who was, you know, it was a big step up for Johnny that night at Ali Pali. He'll have a lot of people in Sheffield as well. Do you think kind of there was a, perhaps a bit too much pressure when it came to Ali Pali? Like I said, he'll have people in Sheffield, but it won't be the numbers that you had that night in, in Ali Pali. I mean, I'm not even t joking here or exaggerating. You could hear them all from the changing room. And at the Ali Pali, it's not even like when you're at the O2, the changing rooms were so far back. So to hear from there is just crazy. Like, like it was just absolutely nuts. I mean, it would be impossible to not feel a bit of pressure from that because he's a human being and he's, again, like I said, inexperienced. It's not like he's been doing this for 20 years and he's he heard and done it all before, like maybe a bit like Chisora and whatnot. He, probably can, he can probably put that in one basket and not have to worry about it. But um, of course, he, <laughs> he would feel it a little bit. But, you know, again, it's another experience. There's not going to be as many in Sheffield, but there's still going to be tons of people there. Still looking at over a thousand fans turning up. Um, and the only reason why there isn't as much as um, before is because now it's like when people are booking holidays, they've got a big festival on in the local area that day, which people had already bought tickets for. We are festival and stuff like that. So a lot of the people are already going there. And it's not in London. So obviously people have to book hotels and whatnot. And obviously it's an expensive time of year for you. But, so um, there'll be a big number there. But when we're back in London, expect that they hear the same noise you had before. But trust me, these guys will probably make it up the same anyway. So Let's talk about Sold Acres. Obviously, just off the back of... Um a win and yeah looks good again and he's one of them that kind of we know he's above that level so yeah. there's like the Lucas Browns the Chris Lovejoys them sort of guys who would be good names on the record but obviously I know financially are kind of harder fights to make when he's at that stage but Sol once again showing that like he's a serious serious heavyweight yeah I feel like he doesn't get the respect he deserves as a heavyweight probably why is that because he's not flashing people out and he isn't a big talker yeah he's very smooth <clears throat> very laid back very relaxed and um He's a boxer more than the puncher, but he can still punch as well. He's everywhere. They all can. But um, but his, his next fight, which I'm, I'm fairly close to doing, will give him that respect amongst the domestic heavyweights. And then he can really push on from there. And once that's done, then he'll get a lot more respect. It's because when you're fighting these experienced, durable like Argentinians, if they know they can't beat you, they'll just tuck up and like, throw the old left hook and then hold you all the time. And it's almost impossible for anyone to look good against any kind of opponent. So... That's basically what the struggle is, is actually getting people that are coming to win to actually fight Sol. Because it's almost high risk, low reward, really. So, but the next one will absolutely be, it'll be 10 rounds for the first time. And it'd be maybe for an international title. If not, it'd be a very good opponent, which then will lead on to that. But, um, but we'll see what we do. I think Matt Truman are looking at doing a Birmingham show this year. So it'd be nice to do one 10 rounder before that, because then that win could then maybe generate the income for a decent, like Lucas Brown, the one we really want is Cash Alley. I think Sol could knock Cash Alley out. And I think that's a big fight for Birmingham because um, they're both local lads, both heavyweights. And that's what people want to see. They want to see local domestic rivalries, even more of a heavyweight. So, and I think the press conference will be quite fun. Yeah, Cash Alley always brings something to the ring, doesn't he? Um, just one more thing on Sol. In terms of the Fabio Wardley, Nathan Gorman fight, we expect to see. I can imagine that's something he's got his eyes on. We know Sol can be moved quickly because of his amateur experience. Has he kind of got one eye or expressed that maybe he's got one eye? on Fabio Wardley and Nathan Gorman? So is desperate to fight Fabio Wardley. He wants to fight him now, actually. And it's easy. If Fabio is to win, it's easy. It's in, it's in else. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why Fabio would look at it and say he wants that fight, personally, because I think if you beat Nathan Gorman, which I'm not sure he does, but cause it's a good fight, it's a good 50-50 fight, but um, then I don't see why he'd be looking at So. I think he'd probably be looking at, I don't know, maybe an easier defence or internationally. I don't know what his plans are if he wants to win it outright, but... Um, but Sol would love that fight, and Sol, I would be very confident of Sol winning that fight if, if he was uh, able to be able to get in there with him. So, um, one more thing, let's talk about Joe Joyce quickly. Um, yeah. I know there's not too much you can say, um, but there's always work going on with someone like Joe because whatever he does next is going to be something quite substantial. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As we always said, and as we promised, he'd be fighting a, a much bigger fight in, in September 24th. It could be potentially slightly later. When I say slightly, I mean by a couple of weeks. Nothing, nothing uh, dramatic. But um, 
we're working on a big name. We're working on big names always. That's what we want for Joe. That's what he deserves as well. But as you know, fighting someone like Joe Joyce, not a lot of people want to sign up for that job. So it's about finding someone with enough heart and enough grit to take up that opportunity to attempt to become WBO number one, <coughs> WBC number two. But um, I think we're quite close on getting a decent one done now. Do we rule completely the Joseph Parker fight out of this September 24th or whatever day it is a couple of weeks later? I think you can't ever completely rule him out. I mean, he's a big name. He says how much he wants to fight. BT and Sky could work together and maybe sort something out. But I think that's the fight that everyone wants and everyone needs to see. So I wouldn't ever rule that fight out. I think that fight always can be done. No matter what, they always say it can't because of rival networks. But listen, when two fighters want to fight enough and their teams want it enough, anything can be done. So. Just one final thing on that. Um, I know you would have been speaking to a sort of different opponents. Do you kind of wait post Joshua Usyk? Because he is going to fight the winner. Joshua and Usyk are two very contrasting styles. Yeah, yeah. Do you wait for that fight to get its result to then find an opponent? Because let's just say theoretically Usyk was to win and he fights someone that's very Joshua style. Do, do you wait and then kind of measure it on that? Or? No, because we need to get Joe in the best possible shape and like experience wise to fight one of those so he's got to fight a genuine world level guy genuine top 10 guy we're getting ready for the top two or top three guys there's no point fighting i don't know let's just say dominic brazil and then you got to go and fight tyson free you got to go and fight Usyk, or you got to go and fight aj but let's be let's be real that he's going to do that one of those in one or two rounds and then what we're stuck with an elite level guy that we've never really prepared for i think he's got to be a genuine world level guy no matter what happens. Listen, you believe in Joe, you believe he's going to win a world title, then we're going to believe he's going to beat these guys. So let's get him in the best possible shape. Let's, let's not go into a world level fight and he just about, just loses because he hasn't had that experience or had enough world level fights. Let's go in there with all the boxes ticked and leave it all in the ring. I think that's the best thing you can do. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.